Welcome back to the official Atari Games Podcast. This is Jason here, uh, joined once again by... Actually, everybody here is actually a returning person to the podcast. So Ethan is back. He is our VP of Games. We got Shaw from Marketing. And we got Megan McTuffie, who was the... Uh, who's done all the music from the Atari Recharge game. So she was on way back in the first iteration of this podcast as the Atari Recharge podcast, but back by popular demand. And by that, Shaw. Yeah, that's right. Saying, Bring Megan back. Bring Megan back. I like, must fine. speak to Woo! Megan. <laughs> well, we're going to make this happen. So it's been a little while. We missed, uh, we missed an episode for Thanksgiving. Tried to get a whole bunch of stuff in order and everything just completely fell by the wayside. So... Apologies for missing it. It's our first miss since we started going, but I got to acknowledge it. Uh, but won't happen again, probably, maybe. We'll see. In that time, though, some stuff has happened. We just launched an update to Atari 50. That came out yesterday. So if you have Atari 50, the anniversary collection, feel free to boot it back up, download the free update, and uh, play the 12 new games that are on there. So that just happened. And from our, uh, from our friends at Night Dive, Turok 3, also live on everything. N64 swan song of sorts. One of them. One of the swan songs. Late Classic. N64. Not, not, I don't think a lot of people had a chance to play that game. So now it's awesome they get no. to get their hands on it. Yeah. Was it, was it late N64? Is that it was the out? latest N64. Yeah. yeah. If you look at the timing, it's kind of wild because I believe it came out in 2000. It was either 2000 or 2001. So that would mean Dreamcast was out, PS2 was out, and we're mm-hmm. on the brink of. It was an exclusive there too, Xbox. right? I don't know. I am not. Gonna, oh, I don't know. I, I don't shouldn't be. I, I should know that stuff. Before I Hard pivot. My, my mouth. <laughs> Call Larry. Oh, right. Before we get out of this, though, also thank you to everybody who showed up at LA Comic Con. and got to and maybe you got to play ping pong. Maybe you saw Ethan at shop, but we're there. Thank you. It happened. Wishlist Quamp to do it. Yeah, it was fun to meet everybody there and play some yeah. pong, ping pong. So there we go. Um, all right. Before we get into talking about Megan. I want to start with a warm up question, not game related. I was debating to make it game related, but I'm going to broaden it. So here's the question. It's at the end of the year. Everybody's talking best of all these things. We got we got musicians in the house. Best or not best. I don't like I don't like using the term best, especially oh when talking God. about Commit to something. Come on. Albums. Favorite. Favorite album of the year. Album. That's what I want to know. Ooh. Album. Who albums. listens to albums? Album. I do. I do too, That's, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! The going through my first. going through my Apple Music. Uh, All right. Yeah. Well, you got to think of a new Ethan album Rax's that came brain. out this year. So Megan, kick us off. it's cheating a little bit since I haven't actually sat down or popped in the full album from beginning to end, but I've heard almost every single off of this album. Uh, it's called "Godless" by the artist One True God. I've been really into his music lately. If you like electronica, if you like dark, sinister vibes, you'll probably dig it. It's very like Vampire Club. That's how I would describe it. Godless by One, one True, True God. God. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. sounds pretty cool. I just it's pretty great. This to my playlist right now. That sounds awesome. Yeah, All it's right. sweet. Yeah, I need more. I needed more friends like you, Megan, were introducing me to new music like this because I love I this stuff and so I never many find it. Recommendations. I could blast them to you. If you want. All right, then all right, then fine. Here we go. Because they're still looking, so clearly they don't have answers yet. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm adding this to my hit, yeah, hit me with stuff. a number hit me with a number two. Oh, from this year though, that's tricky. That's just so hard. It doesn't have yeah. to be. No one it, 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 music is timeless. Okay. Well in that case, I'm gonna bring back one from the late nineties or early two thousands. Uh Lovage. They have one album. It was produced by Dan the Automator of gorillas fame uh yeah trip hop it's like quintessential trip hop if you guys are metal fans at all you might be familiar with mike patton of mm-hmm. faith no more and mr bungle etc yeah, sure but anyway, he does all of these references he's uh he's on this album so what's that album it's called lovage well the the band is lovage but the album is music to make love to your old lady by <laughs> nice fantastic trip hop amazing nice yeah shaw what do you got uh i've got like three i think um, all right yeah this was a follow-up to an album that came out last year by the mars volta it was like Ooh. the best band of all time love the mars they, volta 
hell yeah it's our best friends now um <laughs> they uh put out a self-titled album last year and they put out a follow-up this year that was like just all acoustic versions of those songs and some extras added in um the title is in spanish and i won't butcher it but definitely recommend checking that out you don't want to try not at all you don't um, spell it nope <laughs> um i i was really um i got introduced to sleep token this year um who's like a they're like they're metal but they also do they also have like some r&b and some electronica um they put out an album called take me to eden um and there's like three or four songs on that album that i was super obsessed with um that i listened to a lot um and the last one is the earl sweatshirt and alchemist album called warrior dire that came out a couple months ago if you like earl sweatshirt or if you like the alchemist and his production it's a very very good combination a lot of weird experimental moody rap it's good nice very cool he gave us three so megan you got it you got a third one i do uh... actually i was just about to like interject uh do it blue stolly i have been listening to him he's freaking amazing uh both his self-titled and the devil is the other album by him that i really haven't been enjoying uh man i haven't heard that name metal in a long time and electronic smash them together it's dope nice. yeah all right I, we I know he was still doing more. stuff I, I love all he of, is uh, he actually just got nominated or not nominated wait yes he just got nominated for a video game score grammy cool so yeah, he's he's doing stuff. Very awesome. All right, Ethan, you got you got some or you want? You know, to I don't. Next? I'm trying to think. I don't think I have like a new album, but I'll say um, it could be when anything. We, when Something we were you um, this year, when we were um, uh, putting out the first Quamp trailer, we were like experimenting with music, and uh, I had recently got this awesome Doctor Octagon shirt, and so I. <laughs> put the blue flowers track as an instrumental on the um against the trailer for fun just internally and that sent me down a rabbit hole of like the like dan like danny automator uh sort of other groups that i used to listen to back then and then of course mf doom and a lot of that sort of like vibe of hip-hop stuff that i haven't listened to i'm like really bad at finding an album and like listening to a specific album i really like to, to go to a, a song or an artist that I like and then like try to find new music through that process. And so I've just been listening to a lot of uh, tracks th- uh, kind of in that genre recently. I get in my car and Apple Music just is playing stuff and I'm and uh, usually happy with it. It is really like one of the best ways to find new music. That's how I do it because otherwise, how are you actually finding things? Despite You have amazing friends like Megan who are just like... That's true. I, I just need to like follow you around and take notes uh, about all these cool because all these cool concepts you're mentioning because uh, I love metal and electronica and these hip hop you know DJs and stuff you're mentioning there. My so uh, gotta... my husband's all really right. into Doctor Octagon, by the way. Oh, nice. We he literally I'll send you just the version did... of the trailer we did. Nice, yeah, yeah I'd love to see it. He he did some Doctor Octagon karaoke at uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That That's sounds like a fun awesome. Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was. Right. I found a lot of stuff through TikTok this year. Um, I'm not afraid to admit it, but TikTok has That's introduced okay. me to a lot of weird music. Weird? That's, I wouldn't think well, it would be weird. I would think it'd be very trendy and oh, my friend, everything with say, a trap yeah. beat. <laughs> Do you know Ryan Celsius? Um, he's like a I don't know what you call him. He's a DJ, but like he does these like streams on on YouTube, like 24 hours. But it's like trap and electronica and I don't know. I just fallen in love with his beats. I like that instrumental stuff during the day when I'm working. Right he's, uh, he's based in DC. I never heard of him. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. He does live shows and stuff. He does a lot of like video mixing and stuff too. So he does some cool visual stuff. Um, I've always wanted to go see him live. Just go find him. Go go visit DC and go uh, go check him out. Maybe run to him in a coffee shop. Um. Yeah, so I'll just go last. Uh, it, I mean, I always talk about the same bands. So if uh, anybody knows you, like, yeah, we get it. But you guys listening don't know me. Uh, Rival Sons, one of my favorite bands. They actually released two albums this year, uh, Dark Fighter and Lightbringer. And uh, I listened to those albums way, like, way too much uh, on loop. 
Who listens to albums? Me. I do. Those albums in particular are awesome. So I, uh, I highly recommend both of those. Also, uh, by nature of seeing uh, Rival Sons live this year, they were uh, the opening act. This is the second time I found a great band that I love through an opening act uh, of Rival Sons. The first one was Sheepdogs uh, like years ago, pre-pandemic. And then um, this year, they were opened up by a company called The Record Company, by, an, by a band called The Record Company. And they just released a new album called The Fourth Album, which is yeah. very good. So I would recommend that as well. What was funny was at the show, we were, uh, I was standing next to, on one side, there was a woman who was there for the first opening act. And she's like, yeah, I don't know anything about the other two. And then just left after the first opening act. And then the second opening act being the record company, there was these Canadian guys who are next to me, who are on my other side. And they were saying like, yeah, we just travel and follow these guys around all over. And they didn't know anything about Rival Sons, who were the headliners, yet they did stick around for the whole thing. But the moment the record company started playing, there was like, because there's a few of us talking, we were like, yeah, okay, we get it. We see why you follow these guys around, because they're awesome. So those would be my my picks. But enough about that. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk to you, Megan. Okay. How have you been? It's been a little while. It has. Can you tell us about, bef- before we get into any like actual directed questions, just tell us a little bit about, uh, tell us about your 2023 in, uh, in the year in Megan McDuffie. All right. 2023. It's kind of hard to remember what I was doing almost a year ago, but I think the beginning of my year was a little bit slow, but uh, only as far as game stuff goes, I was working heavily on artist stuff and uh, was able to crank out three really cool singles, which I have been trickling out releasing throughout this year. Um, two of which I shot two music videos for this past summer up in Alberta, Canada. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, one of them is very sinister and disturbing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you like horror, check that one out. Uh, the next, the second music video. Do you want to, wait, wait, to, hang on. You can't, yeah. you can't just say that and not talk about it. That's, we yeah, have time. Go on. (laughs) I've seen it. But for people who have not. Okay. Yes, of course. Oh, fantastic. Anyway, the song's called Entity. It's uh, loosely based on Jack the Ripper and what would happen potentially if one of his victims came back to haunt him and seek revenge. So just the weirdest thoughts come into my head. And then sometimes I have to produce songs about that. (laughs) It's a cool song and it's a great video. I was watching oh, you've it seen earlier. it. Sweet. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it. Yeah. We come prepared, kind of. Oh, yeah. And then uh, as far as the rest of the year, like from summer onward, I started working on three, no, four games-ish. Yeah. Which I am in crunch mode for now and have been working about 50 hour weeks <laughs> to get everything done. Wow. Yeah. Well. It's a bit nuts right now. If I didn't say thank you for making this time uh, officially here, I will say thank you yet again. Of course. For taking a little bit of time out of that because that sounds wild. It's a bit much, but the end is in sight. Early February, I can take some time off. Very good. Well, Shaw, why don't we uh, go to you because I think you uh, you had some questions you wanted to jump in with here. Sure. Hey. Um, yeah, no, I was, um, I was, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole this past couple days. Um, cause I, uh, I saw on Twitter, you posted a clip of entity like maybe last week and I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. Um, and so I wanted to kind of listen to some other stuff you put out and it had me thinking like, I know you from recharge games from working at Atari. And then I listened to some recent stuff and I'm like, oh wow, this is like a little different. (laughs) <laughs> dark yes. grungy aggressive yes um and so i guess what what's your what's your approach when you're tasked with like a video game versus your solo work which i know may be a little bit more personal but how do you kind of balance the two of those those moods hmm yeah good question so i think foremost uh with any game client or game square i have 
a brief or I at least have a direction, some foundational element that was given to me that I can sort of use, right, to to focus my energy. And so it's not this giant void of I can do whatever I want. Usually there's some sort of uh, reference material that I listen to. So I think that just in itself is like, well, I have to hit the brief, right? I have to make it enhance the gameplay. It can't be just this wacky thing that I pull out of the void, like for my artist stuff. So that's, I mean, yeah, that's the main thing is like, do what the client wants, nail that, and the artist stuff can be whatever I want. Nice. And so, yeah, you're, you're kind of, you're trying to follow a certain mood and a vibe. And then talk through when you're just doing your Megan McDuffie stuff. I mean, it's, you obviously have a lot more freedom, but where does, where does that come from? Where are you pulling inspiration from? And what's your process when you're sitting there trying to come up with something? Well, I think for many creative people, Uh, inspiration just sort of hits at the weirdest, most random times in the shower, going for a run, driving to the store, whatever. So that's when it hits me too. And I have to pull out my phone, record a voice memo of like, okay, there's this melody. And then, you know, the bass line's doing this and the drums would be in this and that kind of thing. So uh, I will be hit with inspiration very, very randomly. (laughs) And uh, things like artwork and movies Mm -hmm. and other artists work other albums and and music will inspire me as well i'll hear a track and be like oh i really like this bass line let me see if i can take elements of that and start Mm -hmm. a whole new thing and um on top of that too if i just sit down to write something i'll go through some of my favorite plugins and software or sample libraries and just start noodling. And literally as I'm going through preset sounds, I will come up with stuff because I'll hear a sound that I like. And then that immediately gets me going on something. Do you feel like you have to have, Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jason. Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say like continuing on that thought, like, do you feel like you have to have something already in your head or are you at a point where you can be like, I could just sit down and just make something or does it have to come from somewhere? uh, For both games and artist stuff. Yeah. I can just sit down and yeah, just start. Usually I start with drums, bass, and that sort of dictates the rest of the track. What I was going to ask was, you know, you mentioned the two different processes. You mentioned how you get a brief, you know, I looked it up and the, you were on when we first launched Centipede Recharged. So that was over two years ago. Yeah. And also 10, and that was nine games ago. So <laughs> there have been 10 Recharge games that have released since Berserk came out in November. And I want to know which was, uh, which was the most interesting brief that you got? Which of the titles, do any of them stand out? And it doesn't have to just be one. Like, do do any stand out as being like, oh, I'm going to have some fun with this. I'm going to get crazy. That's a great question. It's oh, yes. two years. <laughs> like, <laughs> <a great question. laughs> two years is a long time. So I'm trying to trying to remember the process for each one because two years is a long time and nine games is a lot of games. Uh, I think. Oh, that's tough. Well, take the the most recent Berserk. Um, that one had a pretty fun brief because it was a little bit quirkier, I guess, than some of the previous ones. <laughs> kind of reference tracks from all over the place, a little bit of disco sprinkled in. And I was like, OK, that's that's pretty fun. <laughs> um, another one that was really fun to do was Gravatar, just simply because it oh, yeah. was very different. Right. All of the recharge games are super upbeat except for Gravatar. Gravatar is very spacey and floaty and ambient and uh, atmospheric. So that one was kind of fun just to, to break the, the rep- not repetition, but you know what I mean, to break, break it up a little bit. Yeah. And it's cool that it's just become such a, like your music is such a, like a core part of the identity of those games at this point, where just by saying Gravatar, I hear 
some of those some of the songs and you say berserk and i hear the songs it's like i can't think of one without the other um <laughs> yay you know, did my I, job well I, then <laughs> you, yeah, oh yeah for sure missile command actually was one that i thought was great because i i kind of gave you a lot of like this cold war epic stuff and i was like oh can you do like some bond like things i remember when you delivered one of those songs you said yeah i put in your little bond thing for you <laughs> it was that's why I like missile command is one of my favorites i'm totally with you with gravatar as well with uh with how that goes and actually fun fact about the the soundtracks we were i think i told you this but we at pax east uh pax west sorry we were playing off sam's phone all of the recharge soundtracks on loop so when he got his spotify wrapped he got to see your video because that was his top played Oh songs my gosh. were Megan McDuffie and he got your personal thank you video <laughs> as a result. That's amazing. Cause yeah, a very small percentage of people got that video. I don't know what percentage it was, but whatever top echelon of fans. <laughs> Doesn't matter to be there and then to get that video. You think I got a thank you video from Rival Sons? No. I'm also not on Spotify. So maybe they did. Yeah, Couldn't perhaps they did. It's waiting for you. <laughs> That's pretty um, great. I guess sticking with the some of the process stuff like with recharge and then you go to like river city girls which i think may be one of your like bigger sound video game music moments um is there any light you can shed there on the difference within the process of a game like river city girls versus a recharge title i think the main difference simply lies in scope so recharged feel very small and contained in comparison to something like River City, which I think for the first game I delivered 60 pieces of music. So wow. that gives you an idea of the, <laughs> the difference between the two, just in terms of scale. Uh, my process is pretty much and probably the same. like double the demos behind it. Oh, so or scrapped much, ideas. So much. Yeah. I am very fortunate in that I don't do a lot of stuff that doesn't get used. So nice. if I sit down to write a track, it's going in the game like 99% of the time, which is great. But yeah, scope, vastly different. Style, a little bit different. Um, but my process is the same. Yeah. And then how does collaboration fit into that? Because I, I noticed there were songs that you did with some other people on those soundtracks and, and within your own like um, solo stuff. There's, there's times that you collaborate. Um, how do you how do you pick your collaborators and how do you decide like okay I need this voice or or this um, sound on on this track? Sure, yeah. So for River City specifically, um, let's see. The first game, I didn't actually collaborate with any of the people, the other musicians that are on the album. Um, Way Forward had an idea of who was going to do what, and they delegated and. Like, I didn't even hear the other artists work until the very end and the soundtrack was going mm. out. <laughs> so wouldn't consider that a collaboration. For the second game, they, Way Forward Again, was like, okay, we want these people. Where do you feel that they would best fit or where the collaboration would best shine? Um, so, yeah, just kind of picked according to their skills. Uh, and then for my artist stuff, I usually have an idea about what kind of voice I'm looking for. And then I'll just reach out to my colleagues or my network of people and say, hey, do you know any metal vocalists? Or do you know any vocalists that can do this style? Um, so yeah, that's just generally how it works for me. How important is networking in your world then? Like, do you have a... a Rolodex of people that you can kind of call on that you've built up over the years? I do. And yes, networking is the number one thing. I have gotten most of my work through word of mouth and personal recommendations, mm. friends of friends recommending me for things. Um, yeah, as you, as you said before, River City Girls was definitely kind of the flagship title. Uh, they caught the most eyes and ears and whatnot. And that was a networking miracle. <laughs> I knew somebody based on uh, we were in like a group of video game enthusiasts and remixers like video game soundtrack remixers 
And he just happened to be best buds with some of the people at Way Forward. And that's how that went. So, yes, networking essential. How else would you get the word out nowadays? I mean, there's so many channels and there's so much noise right now um, <laughs> with yes. with music because everybody can just like buy, I don't know, a copy of Fruity Loops or get a couple like um, instruments and just become a bedroom musician or a basement musician or whatever and put out like really amazing things. Um, how are you or how would you recommend people stand out nowadays? That's really challenging because I'm still trying to figure out how to do that myself. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, I mean, the relationships that I've made over the last 12 years I've been doing this have been absolutely essential. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today without that. So I think there's absolutely still a place for that. Now that COVID is mostly, you know, it's it's on the way out. Uh, people are getting together in person and stuff. So go to meetups, go do stuff with people, like even talk to your dentist. <laughs> like you never know who is going to know who. Um, but yeah, other than that, just honestly sticking with it, like persistence and relationships, try not to be silly or spammy about it. I find that if somebody is presented with something that looks like an ad or is go listen to my music, they have, there's zero interest. You want to actually make connections with people and then, you know, sprinkle in what you do later. Do you find, do you find there's value in like a specialty, for example, like what it, when you pitch yourself, because you said like, you're still trying to stand out, right? Um, how do you, how do you pitch yourself at, with your music? And do you think it's better to, you know, like for people who are actually trying to get in and break out, is it better them to market themselves as a specific genre or niche or kind of be like, well, I can do everything, you know, it's like, what do you, what do you want? I can do this. I can do that. I can do that. Um, I think especially when starting out, it's really good to have a focus. Um, even just for the the chance to really hone your skills in that one specific area, because it's a little bit easier, I think, than trying to market yourself as I do everything, because that personally comes across as a little bit disingenuous because people always have strengths and weaknesses. So I think establishing yourself, being really good for one thing opens more opportunities to people uh, being willing to take you seriously for other things too, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Was there like a breakthrough moment for you in your career where you were just like, yes, I'm here, <laughs> I made it? I think um, it was a little bit of a slow burn. When I was hired for River City Girls right at the onset, I was like, this feels big. Like, this is the biggest company who's ever reached out to me. And this is the literally the biggest <laughs> score that I've ever done with 60 pieces of music. And then once the soundtrack and the game released, it was like a year after I'd started working on it. Um, then I really knew. Like I had that feeling, but once it was out, I was getting all these messages. People were talking about the soundtrack and I was like, okay. I had a feeling, but I'm validated. This is amazing. <laughs> how do you, how did, did you, you keep the momentum going from there? Well, I don't know. Just, <laughs> just kept my connections alive and talked to kept answering emails. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And delivering. I mean, that's that's yeah. ultimately part of it, right? Yes. It's just like constantly. Like the fun thing about working with Megan, and I can say this now after 10 games, is I, I said the same thing, I think, when we first did the Centipede podcast. But like since that, I've given you zero notes on any delivery. I think the only time you got notes, and I'll call his ass out, it was Tadas yep. when, uh, when you were doing Caverns of Mars and 
every every game he was like drum and bass we should do drum and bass drum and bass and i'm like <laughs> all right but how but how about this and I'm like he was basically overruled every time not by me but by like the larger group and then finally like caverns of mars it's like all right you're at the helm what do you want to do and he's like drum bass I'm like fine let's see it and then it was like too too much <laughs> for him like whatever you deliver and i was like this is like kind of good i'm getting into this like all right right on and he was like yeah i'm not a fan because you had like some like some woos or something at the end i don't know it was like getting kind of hyped and he was like yeah that's a little bit too much at the end <laughs> other than that no notes even for the rest of caverns so three out of four songs there no notes so yeah i mean that that will always get i mean that referral and people like ask me hey you have a good musician to work with i'll be like yeah megan no notes she just <laughs> delivers every time and and kills it so that's that's a big part of it as well my question oh go ahead ethan well, I, I had a weird question. Uh, yeah. I'm curious how you balance like um, a pa- the passion for a medium with like it being a job and you having to like hit deadlines and stuff. I think for us working in games, I'll, I'll speak for both Sean and, and Jason. I think and saying like I love video games so much and I'm, I feel so incredibly blessed to be like working in that space. But sometimes it's a challenge to um, like uh have that be the work because not work isn't always fun work can be challenging and when that work is also a thing that you're passionate about it can really like challenge your um your sense of self i guess in some ways like i'm curious i assume you're passionate about music our conversations earlier made me think so but like like is that is that ever an issue for you and how do you kind of balance that how do you keep your creative sense like like engaged even if it's work oriented yeah, um, I have not luckily been challenged with that too much. I somehow am able to just keep the passion at the highest possible level at all times. Um, I think it's just stemming from the fact that I've always had the singular focus that I would be a professional musician and I didn't necessarily know what path that would take, and I've dabbled in many different avenues of making this work professionally. Um, So yeah, I'm just super hyped that I get to do this for a living. So it, I don't know. I think I just see people working their jobs and being miserable, and I'm like, ha, that's amazing. I get to do this. I'm so thankful for that. So luckily, I haven't gotten too fatigued. We'll see. Talk to me at the end of February when <laughs> I've put in every weekend from now until then. And then maybe it'll be different, but hopefully not. Yeah, I guess that's the other side of it, right? Is if like if you just keep doing the thing you love and you just keep doing that with passion, then uh sometimes the work comes to you in that way. Um so it's not always sort of seeking it out. But yeah. Okay, I'll I'll remember to call you in February. <laughs> Was there was there ever a moment in your career that you can look back and go like, Ugh, I don't know, I don't know if this is it, guys, um, where you just kind of felt deflated or or not not really as um, uh, I guess motivated as you are now. There was definitely a time. I don't know how many years ago it was, but I was I kind of get to these like plateaus where. I'll push and push and push and push and strive. And then I finally break through a little bit of a goal. And then from there, it's really hard to get to the next level. And I'm always a little bit dissatisfied once I'm there because the next level seems super unattainable. So there was a time maybe seven, eight years ago where I just wasn't finding anything. And I was just kind of throwing darts like, okay, I'll work on trailers. Maybe that'll happen. Oh, I'll work on this. Maybe that'll happen. So yeah, I definitely get discouraged even now from time to time. Like this is not taking off as much as I want. What am I doing or what can I be doing differently? So it's just a, it's a daily hustle, but that's the thing, right? Just persistence in all things. Yeah. I guess for people who aren't professional musicians like us what what is the what is your day-to-day like are you it's, it's not you're just not just waking up and grabbing a guitar it's, uh, <laughs> i assume not quite <laughs> what, what's what what, what 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 are your days like uh my days right now i'm pretty structured i'll get up around 8 a.m have breakfast go to work so 
I'll be here in my studio and see what's on my calendar. I literally have every game and every track scheduled out uh, by day or two because usually I can produce a minute to two minutes of music every single day. So it's just very structured. Uh, I work until 6 p.m. And then now I've added Saturdays to my routine as well. (laughs) So yeah, I'm just... It's basically a nine to five, but it's an eight to six and plus Saturdays. Yeah. Are you playing a lot of instruments too? Like what is your, what is your hardware setup look like? Like what kind of, what kind of gear do you work with on a daily? Mostly everything is what they call in the box, which is just um, VSTs and plugins and everything I do is MIDI based. So I have a MIDI keyboard on my desk over here where you can't see it. Um, I do have some pretty cool gear over here that is brand new. I haven't touched it yet. I haven't learned it yet. So I haven't used it. Um, like a really cool little like groove box thing. I also have a Roland Juno six, which is an analog synth where that little moonlight is. Um, unfortunately that doesn't have MIDI capabilities, so I can't Mm. plug it in and quantize everything. So it's nice and neat. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm mostly a computer musician I guess you could say I do have uh I do have skills in piano I started taking piano when I was about eight years old and I play a little bit of drums and bass and violin as well so sometimes when a score will call for that I have like just enough skill where I can record myself and layer it in (laughs) cool but then you sometimes will will you ever like seek out uh, another musician for a particular like element like if you're looking for I don't even know if you're looking for like a slap uh, bass Vuvuzela. track or you're looking you know, for something more uh, that you feel like you're not getting out of the box. You want more of an analog. Do you, do you, do you ever seek that out? Or is that, is that, I don't really know. I don't really know the musical process as much anymore, but like, I don't know how hard, uh, how hard that is or if that's a reality. I definitely do. If, you know, if my samples aren't cutting it, which sometimes they just can't, I will definitely seek outside help. Uh, brass is always a tricky one if I need a really juicy sax mm. line or something. Like samples just kind of don't cut it. Uh, same with electric guitar or distorted metal guitars. I definitely will. I have like a little small pool of people that I can reach out to and be like, hey, Rich, jump on this thing real quick. So, yes, I do seek help. Interesting. Nice. I was just going to ask, um, as we kind of transition out and get to the end here, um, when you find yourself in these moments, I, I don't know if you would call them crunch, uh, but as you've added Saturdays and you find yourself like overwhelmed by, or not necessarily overwhelmed, but like more occupied than usual, let's yes. say. <laughs> when, you find, when you find those moments of reprieve to decompress, what do, what do you do? I try not to produce any more music obviously I try to like leave my studio completely uh what do I do I'm trying to think well I do try to at least exercise three four times a week uh two of those would be pole dancing that's my external extracurricular hobby uh that gets me out of my musical analytical brain where I can just literally focus on remembering choreography and technique So that's a really nice reprieve for me. It's just like I focus only on dancing. Um, What else do I do? I like to read. I read a lot. I like to watch Netflix sometimes. You know, the usual stuff. Fair enough. Yeah. What are your movie recs? Ooh, movie recs. Are you talking just like from the history of cinema? Like everything? What's What's some cool stuff you watched this year? This year? Mm, let's see. Uh, Talk to me was pretty great. I keep hearing about that one. Yeah, yeah, really effed up, <laughs> but in a good way. It's great. I love horror movies. What else from this year? I haven't seen a ton of movies this year. Although tonight they're um, they're playing The Abyss remastered in 4k and it's only in theaters for one night across the country so i'm going to see that nice it's one of my favorites well enough uh enough about the movie talk (laughs) let's end this thing like we usually do let's talk about the games we're playing 
at least uh, recently. And uh, I don't know. Uh, where should we start? Uh, Shaw, why don't you go first? Um, I've been slowly going through this with all the travel and stuff. It's been hard to sit down and play games, but I'm still playing Thirsty Suitors. Um, I was really excited about that when I saw the trailer like last year or whenever that was. Um, it's super weird and fun. Um, I, uh, love the South Asian representation in that game. Um, there's like a, there's a cooking game within it where you make a lot of like traditional food. And there's also like weird, like relationship building with your exes. And it's got, it's got a really weird personality. It's got some really cool humor. Um, the characters are pretty interesting so far, especially as like, the main character who like comes back to her like small town and is trying to like, like all of her exes find out that she's in town and they start to like conspire against her in a weird way. Kind of like Scott Pilgrim, um, but with brown people, which I dig. <laughs> uh, and everything is like a mini game. Like even like if you pet the dog, it's like this like sequence of quick time events that you can really mess up on and feel bad about. Um, or like when you're cooking and you have to like wash your hands, it's like four or five different button presses and joystick maneuvers. Um, it's cool. It's, it's a lot of fun. There's a skateboarding, it's a skateboarding aspect of it too, like some Tony Hawk and it's a lot and I'm excited to beat it. Um, hopefully, hopefully in the next week or so, but totally, totally recommend Thirsty Suitors. Very cool. Megan. That game sounds wacky and I want to check it out. Um, Super fun. Yeah. It sounds wild. Uh, I've been recently playing Ghostwire Tokyo. It came out a handful of years ago, but oh my God, I'm obsessed. I have played like 45 hours of this game. It's amazing. It's so good. It's It's so so freaking good. And nobody talks about it. No. I love it so much. (laughs) Yeah. The, The problem with that game is it's almost impossible to sell because... It is a, it looks like a horror game and it looks like a like spooky, dark, you know, Japanese based thing. But what it really is, is a platformer collect-a-thon. It is. It's also a shooter. Like it's very Far Cry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Except you're using magic instead of guns. (laughs) And it's, but it's so easy. Like there's nothing challenging about it except for all the platforming and they're just running around. And the moment you collect souls, it's like you've collected one of like 3 million. And you're yes. Like, oh, <laughs> cool. I just love the aesthetics of it. It's so atmospheric, like wandering around yeah. abandoned Tokyo with ghosts popping up is just so my jam. It is really, really cool. I'm so yeah. happy that you there's some that. really That's... trippy stuff in there too. When you get sucked into the underworld and stuff, it's so cool. Yeah. And I believe it's on game pass and PlayStation plus extra. So if you got either of those, definitely recommend that as well. I can co-sign this recommendation. Yeah, it's cool. Ethan. So it's thirsty suitors is, I think is on uh, game mm-hmm. pass too. So it's on game pass. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, what have I, I guess, so recently for LA Comic Con, we pulled out like some uh, old Overwatch costumes uh, <laughs> that we had from uh, a Halloween many ages ago. My daughter, my nine year old, really wanted to like go and cosplay to LA Comic Con. And so uh, I went as um, Cassidy. Is that what we call him now? That's C. That is a PC and, term. Yeah. And my daughter went as Ash. And, and part of that has triggered this like re-emergence of overwatch at our house <laughs> and my nine-year-old who doesn't really play first person shooters very often no like dual analog very well um is like really trying to play that game and so uh i've been playing more of overwatch recently in my living room trying to help my daughter um you know be the best uh widow maker she can be it's amazing she's gonna get there She's got it in her. She will. I mean, I watched this happen with my son when he was younger, like playing. I remember him playing Minecraft in the beginning and him like his first experience with dual analog. It's it's a thing that we take for granted, right? We we, we do so much dual analog work that you kind of don't think about it when you watch a child like try to learn how to how to use it. And then now I watch him play and it's like I can't even operate a controller like like he does. It's 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 wild. He like has this weird claw grip thing he does and he's just like going to town. So she'll get there, I'm sure. Oh yeah, no doubt. 
cool. And that's for myself. Uh, let's see, which one do I want to go with here? You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to say, uh, uh, Mario RPG. I've been playing that just cause I, I know Ethan really loves it the way I say Mario. So he could, he could deal with that. And <laughs> this game is a delight and I highly recommend it. It's a remake of a game from Super Nintendo made by Square Enix, uh, re-released on Switch. It is beautiful looking, like absolutely phenomenal looking and hilarious, hilarious writing. Like I have never, I've never played this game before. I didn't play the original release. I have played a few of the, um, the Mario and Luigi games and uh, Paper Mario, which are more the spiritual successor of this series. And those were all great, fun, silly games. The Paper Mario series really became like kind of its own thing. It went away from the turn-based combat, but this just goes back to the roots. And it's such a good entry point, I think, for anybody looking for an RPG and turn-based uh combat system that just wants to get their toes wet because it's very easy it's very forgiving they even poke fun at the new things where before you had to only save at these specific save boxes but they literally say oh it'll save every time you walk into a new room so don't worry about it (laughs) like that was not language that was in the original game and it's just a good time it's just really fun whimsy and sometimes isn't that what we need in these dark times, don't we need a little whimsy? So Mario RPG, check it out. Get some whimsy in your life. Uh, on the Mario, uh, on the Mario track, um, I, I follow a lot of the 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 Mario Maker and like ROM hack for SMW ROM hack communities, and um, they're all of these ROM hacks of Super Mario World that different people will will rebuild. Um, and they're incredible platforming games. And one of the uh, there's guy Barbarous King has made a series of them called Grand Pooh World. So Grand Pooh World One, Grand Pooh World Two, which came out like I don't remember, like six, six, seven years ago. He just released uh, Grand Pooh World Three, and it and in, in a lot of ways it's like this funny sort of um, micro community, and there's jokes associated within that community and stuff, but. Under it is just such incredible, like level design and game design and music, and um, there's a series of these like uh, bit trip uh, composers who who create a lot of this music, and it plays from an original um, Super Nintendo, and it's just like incredible cool. to see what that community builds. And that game, I've been watch. I can't play it because I'm not good enough to play those games because they're very, very difficult. But watching the community play that game over the last uh, week or so has been really awesome. That's I, I kind of think of that as a game I've been playing, even though I haven't been actually playing it. I've just been watching the community play that game, and it's just incredible. It, it's a game. It's a game you've been experiencing. Yeah, I'll so download cool. those games and try to play them, and I just don't. I can't even get past the first level. Uh, they're just the technical capability on those games is so advanced. But you're <laughs> something about watching a community like over optimize something to a point where it's this, it's a different art form. Um, and then for them to re and then them build their own games within, within that archetype. It's incredible. Um, so there, grand pool world there, three, there is that level that was created in Mario maker two with the fireballs spinning around, like the fire stick spinning around. And there's like a donkey video that goes through where he's actually going through it at one, like little by little, I mean, just watching that gave me agita, and I never want to play that game again after watching that video for whatever reason. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Megan, thank you so much for joining. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you coming back. And where can people find you? And Everywhere. where should they go to get all your music? <laughs> uh, I'm on Spotify. Everywhere. I'm on like every major streaming platform. Uh, Bandcamp, if you still prefer MP3 downloads. And um uh, Follow me on YouTube and Instagram. That's where I live most. So yeah, it's been a pleasure. Awesome. Ethan, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter, I guess, at edoglost, or um, you can find me out in the world. Um, I'll be down at the Game Awards tomorrow, walking around. Looking fresh. Shaw? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter, at TanConMan. I post Such a good day. musings about the games and the world around us nice and you can follow me at jays of doom uh on twitter slash x 
I hate that. It's really just bad. I hate just say Twitter too. then if you don't like X. it. X. <laughs> X. X is going to give it to you. I'll be out there on X sheeting because <laughs> I think that's what you're supposed to call it now. What are um, you doing? Sheeting? I mean, I guess that's how you're going to write it. If you're like X eating, sheeting. How else would you pronounce huh. it? It doesn't matter. Point is, follow us there. Find us. Uh, say hi to Megan in various places. And join the Atari Discord. You can find those links in uh, in the description below on uh, on the podcast feed or on YouTube. So join the Discord. Follow Atari on, tw- on Twitter slash X. Uh, follow all of us. And until next time, thanks for listening.